we are about to play The Shadow of the Weird Wizard, a new game by Robert Schwab, currently on Kickstarter. Uh, it is an advanced rule set from his original game, Shadow of the Demon Lord. Um, we've got a couple, couple. we have four great players here with us, and I'll let each of them talk a little bit about themselves, and then we'll jump right on in, having all the fun. Um, let's go, Paige, go ahead and start off, would you? Hi there, my name is Paige Lightman, and I am an any award-winning adamantine best-selling author uh, and co-author with my husband of uh, several D&D adventures. I have worked on several other games as well, and I'm super excited about Weird Wizard because I love Shadow of the Demon Lord. All right, Sean, follow her up if you want. Happy to. Hello, humans. I'm Sean Banerjee. Uh, the founder of the Word Refinery, which uh, most of these other people have done amazing work for. We focus on uplifting underrepresented voices in the gaming industry. Uh, we recently did our first Kickstarter for Kaboa, available on Back of Kit now. And I am also an Adamantine editor. There you go. Awesome. Adrian, what have you got for us? Hey, y'all. Um, I'm Adrian Rhodes, a freelance tabletop RPG writer, um, also avid gamer, um, play anything you throw in front of me, I'll, you know, play it, at least give it a try. Uh, and like the people here, I'm very excited to be playing this. Um, I'm looking forward to it. The game system seems really cool and a little bit different than something I've been used to. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out and just excited to be here. And Ben. Hey everybody, I'm Ben Heisler. I am uh, by day the associate producer of role-playing games for Renegade Game Studios, and by night I get to play awesome games like this. Um, I've been a, a fan of Rob's work since fourth edition, uh, and also love Demon Lord, and I'm super excited to try out this new system. Um, and I'm also uh, working on Kabela and a member of the Word Refinery, and I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> Awesome. I feel left out because I'm just barely in the industry. I have one adventure published, thanks to Rob. Um, Blood Will Run, Shadow of the Demon Lord, look it up. And um, other than that, I just help him find weirdness in his own game to make sure that it's not too weird for other people. Uh, <laughs> that, that, is, that is a big job. It's a very important <laughs> part of the job. They have the right amount of weird. That's very important. I, it is, I was going to say you're doing God's work, but... <laughs> Probably not. All right. Well, you guys have had time to look over the um, the packet. You've picked out um, characters. And as we've talked a little bit before we started, the four of you are heading out on a little weekend getaway to do some fishing and beer drinking at a out in the boondocks uh, brewery and little uh, lake town. Um, as you whoa, whoa, whoa. You're starting to make this sound like a vacation, which... I haven't had in a minute, so I'm very excited about this. Well, it's it's uh, it's it's going to end. That'll probably end soon, but I don't want to take <laughs> away your agency. You can decide to skip everything and just go fishing if you so desire. Just on the beach, yes. That could but be as you guys are making your way uh, towards our destination, if you don't mind, can you give just a little quick something about your character so everybody at home knows what we're doing here? Sure. And we go back in the same order that we introduced ourselves. That way it makes it simple. All right. Uh, I am playing Whisper. Whisper is an elf. Elves are immortal fairies that comes from a land hidden from mortal eyes. Uh, they are a drifter wandering from place to place, taking whatever catches their eye. And I do mean that literally um, because they're, they're a rogue. And they don't stay in one place for very long. They are re relatively tall and thin and androgynous. And they have a like light sky blue hair. I like it. I like it. And they very use cool. they, them pronouns. Uh, sweet. I think I'm next. Yeah. I am playing Saya. We go Saya. Uh, I have no idea what lineage they are because it doesn't tell me. They're a human, and humans in this game, the human ancestry is the default. So if it doesn't say, that's what you fall um, back to. I'm a human. Really sad about that. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Zaya is a fundamentalist, so it's a lot like re returning to my youth. Uh, they are a priest, they are a holy person, they are a follower of the High One. Uh, they also use they, them pronouns. And, uh, We'll get into what they look like later when I think more about it. Sounds good. 
Okay, um, I am playing Soldier V, um, not five, V. And I am basically um, a clockwork uh, being, meaning I'm a robot built by none other than the weird wizard himself. Um, he brought me to life. Um, I've been serving as a guard in the Forbidden City for many years. Um, then he disappeared, so I guess I wasn't a very good guard. I'm not sure what happened to him. Um, and I've been basically wandering around, you know, trying to find new purpose and hopefully be better than I was before. So I say I'm about six foot four, kind of tall, but I'm, I'm bulky. Um, but have different bits and pieces of me that don't really quite match as far as metal, like some of it's brass, some of it's gold, some of it's like silverish or tarnished, um, that sort of thing. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much me. I'm a really good person, I would think. Trying to be a person, period, is you know a trial for me. Some of the things that humans do and these life forms are weird. I don't understand the whole thing about just smashing things into your mouth in order to, for sustenance, there's gotta be a much better way than that, but it's what they do, so. But smashing is so good. <laughs> I understand, I, I get how fleshies do things, but that's okay, and that will be me. I am playing Crunk. Uh, I am a eight foot tall, 400 pound, uh, just mountain of fur and muscle. And Crunk has been a recluse. So Crunk, not entirely sure what's going on in the world so much, which perks works out perfectly for me. I have only had a little bit of time to go through this packet. Uh, so <laughs> Crunk, it's, it's art imitating life. Uh, and it's perfect that Crunk Because you are also eight feet tall and very furry. Uh, I With mean... Horns. That's accurate. Not wrong. <laughs> but I was more talking about being clueless. Oh, but okay. I'll take both. Or I'll take all three. Uh, Crunk, Crunk often is asking uh, what's actually going on here. And frequently apologizing to... Whisper. Don't worry. I, I'll get these names right mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, because apparently my people did a heckin' bad thing to the fairies, uh, and I've heard about that. So I'm a little gullible. I'm a little little rock and roll. We'll see how this goes. All right. Well, it seems like uh, <clears throat> an interesting band. We will uh, see what kind of fun you can get into. Uh, so the city you're heading towards is called Stillwater, aptly named because it is next to Lake Stillwater. Um, it is a very small village. You know this from talking to some of the people who have brought their um, locally renowned brew to the town you came from that we really don't care what the name of that is. Um, and you are making your way there just to go hang out. Um, you are coming to, from the south and you go past a large um, chunk of woods off to one side. And you just as you pass the edge of that forest on your small little dirt path, you can see up ahead... Um, six buildings kind of just down one side of the road and lake off to the other side and you know that you're about to arrive um, this looks perfect we wanted something relatively small and relatively untrammeled and that's what this place looks like i mean it is small i don't i don't know about this whole small thing but still sounds like fun right Yes, there's not going to be too many people here that might get excited. Oh, good. I'll have to get excited for everybody. Oh, no, Crump. Please, no. Oddly enough, as you say that, you look and you don't see a single soul as you're walking, as you kind of crest into town. Um, you don't see a single soul uh, walking around. It is it is empty. Crump's going to have to get excited for everybody! Um. So is this where we have what you flesh called the fun? Yes, because this place is renowned for having excellent beer. I okay, and that is required. Beer is required for the fun, correct? It's not required, but it's super helpful sometimes. Ah, uh, like lubrication. Yes. yes, it is a kind of social lubricant, in fact. Oh, okay. I have some lubricant I have to use. No, 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 that, not oh, that. Okay. Oh. We're good. Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> if Kronk starts saying the same thing, though, <laughs> Whisper is out. 
see it, darling. Uh, what do you? At that, you see one of the door on the far building, on the last building in the row of the street. The one door swings out open, and a couple people kind of pour out. You can hear them just kind of arguing amongst themselves, voices going high low, but really can't make too much out of it. Um, above that door, as your eyes are drawn to it, there is a, a a mug of beer kind of swinging, a little wooden sign swinging over the door. Um, looks to be the brewery, probably. Sia, what do you think, darling? Oh, well, bud, you know how I am about these things. Yeah, I love some fishing, and uh, I, I love some beer. And I think we're going to show our good friend uh, V here a great time about how to be a flesh, I mean, a person, and uh, and how to relax. And this is a great lesson, you know? So it's going to be a lot of fun. Your V doesn't do relax very well. I must well we're going to work on that, you know? Like, it's it's going to be... It's going to be a learning experience for all of us, I think, mm. except for Crunk. Crunk is whisper searches for a word. I heard my name. Crunk. Mm. Yes. I'm Crunk. Yes. I concur. Good work, buddy. Let's uh, uh, perhaps the... head down there. That looks like the brewery. That's where we wanted to go to find that beer. It's been so good. Even after travel on these roads. You make your way past a couple of buildings that look like um, housing facilities. And you get past, you know, a little trade area. There's a small chapel to the high one, just a little tiny little outpost building. And you get to the brewery, which is just on the other side of that. And there, by this point, there's probably 15 or 20 people outside. And they're all kind of still debating whatever conversations they were having on the inside when a um, middle-aged man walks out and his hands are raised and he is just going to town talking about everything that must be important in this town. And everybody, uh, the rest of the people have kind of stopped, start listening to him again. And he is rambling on about that the grain will be here. We don't need to worry. There's no way that, you know, um, it's not going to make it. We've sent people. We've sent four of our best people to go and get it. We won't starve. Everybody should be okay. Um, oh, this is perfect. They already sent their best people, so we don't need to go. Hey, Zia, it's mm. humans. Oh, yeah, but... Talk to them. I kind of scoot back so that the token human is in the front. And oh. as you do that, you do notice that they are all humans across the board, which you kind of expected knowing, I mean, it is, you're, you're deep in the borderlands and it is 99.9% .9 humans. Um, you kind of expected that, but they have not yet noticed your non-human features. They really haven't even noticed any of you yet. Um, they are really into what they're debating and trying to figure out what's going on. I kind of stand in front of Crump. It's like that oh. picture of the bear hiding behind the sapling. But... <laughs> Zeo will walk forward. Oh, hey there, buds. Uh, how's it going? We're, we're just uh, coming into town. We don't want to interrupt your whole thing, but it looks like you know we're having a little bit of a festival situation. Oh, uh, the, um, w w uh, wait, um, uh, totally at a loss for words. Uh, he parts his way through the rest of the crowd, the main gentleman who's been talking, and starts to slowly step towards you guys. At that point, the rest of the town turns, and, um, fake jaws drop. You can all hit, hear all 20 of them hit the ground at one time. Yes. Uh, the drool starts to pour out of their mouths as they really don't know what's going on and what, is in front of them, and they all start to back away just slightly, almost like that. Let uh, every you know step forward, and everybody steps back, yeah. <laughs> leaving one person in front to talk. Um, he reaches we, out a hand. We did the same thing to Zia. Basically. <laughs> Understandably, we I'm, did. I'm, I'm Harold the Brewer. Um, wel welcome to Stillwater. Um, we don't get oh, a lot what? of people visiting. What what can we help you with? Well. First of all, it's a great day to meet you, you know. Uh, blessings of the high one upon you. I'm Zaya. I'm a little bit of a gospelizer, maybe. Uh, and these are some of my friends. But uh, we just heard there was such great fishing. And a little bird told me. Uh, Dan, are there birds in the setting? Yes, yes. Lots birds of birds. Are real. Birds aren't real. <laughs> I didn't say they're real birds. I said birds are here. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
So the weird wizard made all mechanical birds, too. I see. <laughs> yep. It's the only way you can keep up with the population. Yeah. Well, little bird told me that the brewers around here are really doing some top-notch work there. So oh, oh, I gathered okay. some of my uh, my buddies here, and we came up for a nice little R&R weekend. Well, please welcome, welcome. Well, come come in. Let me show. You, let me bring you inside. And he's kind of sly. He like puts one arm and just kind of pushes the entire wall of jaw dropped humans out of the way. And he opens up the door, very excited to have some people coming in. Um, we walk in, and it's just a small little tap room. There's a couple of tables. There's probably enough room for exactly that amount of people to be in there, sitting down and talking. Mm-hmm. And they might have even been sitting on tabletops or on the floor. It's just not that big. Uh, another door from the room leaves you figure back into this you know the area where actually the manufacturing goes on um he as looks around through he, the as we walk through the the parted crowd uh zia's gonna try to shake as many hands as possible <laughs> like oh hey nice to meet you nice to meet you uh, smiley day maybe have a oh. few takers you get a smile ish thing here and there that is Follow, uh, following that lead crunk is going to attempt to do the same i'm sure it's a hilarious results Oh, yeah, uh, more people run, um, at least, you know, they run back away from you and then they stop and turn and look again. It's this weird scared versus awe kind of thing. They don't know what they should be doing. Um, if they yeah, were brighter, they might all be like, running, but it's hard to say. People are going to be by this whole process on how this whole greeting thing works. It seems very weird. Shaking yeah. hands is a traditional greeting among humanoid bipeds. Mm. I don't understand what it signifies. If you see the it person, it signifies them. that your hand is open and not holding a weapon. That's obvious. I understand, but it's it's a ritual. Sometimes you do things for the way they make you feel. Feel? So it's like magic? Um, you know, buddy, it is a little like magic. Friendship is kind of people is magic. magic. Yeah. Friendship is magic. Yes, that's right, bud. We should just end there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming in. <laughs> Got to do that like, I'm again, so I'm, I'm used to this. Harold <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, gestures to a table um, and says he'll be right back. He goes, grabs a couple of, uh, of mugs, brings out, uh, sets those on the table, and then grabs a couple of large pitchers. Looks to be like three different varieties of uh, of beverages, and sets that on the table for you. And uh, looks and says, um, "If if you don't mind me asking, um, you made it from where? Where did you um, did you happen to come through from the east? Did uh, we? No, from the south, from ah, Southamptonshire." Mm. Ton. Oh, yeah. Ton. That's ton. right. That's right. Ton. I always forget because yeah. it doesn't weigh that much, but they keep calling it ton, and I, I don't know. Yeah, Southampton Shire Ton. How did they weigh it? <sighs> but no, we, we we came from the from the south. Sorry about that, but no, no, it's okay. We no. we have some people missing. They they left off to the east to go and try and uh, get some grain to get us through the upcoming winter. Um, but they were your little... best folks, right? So I'm sure they'll run. Yeah, they're three days late, and we just don't really have anybody that can go out and and take a look for them. Most you saw the what I have left to work with here. Um, mm. They barely could shake a hand with the obvious priest priest of the high one. So they're they're, okay. they're kind of they're kind of scared at the moment. I'll get really serious and I'll put a hand on his shoulder. Hey, bud, that's rough. And then I'll pour myself a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you'll yeah. like that one. That one has a hint of honey and algae in it. I mm. love algae. I'll deal with the honey. Mm-hmm. Whisper gets the biggest cup and then pours it for Crunk and then pours herself a normal size cup, drinks two sips, and then hands that to Crunk. All right. Crunk makes these problems disappear. <laughs> Come on, Soldier B. If you put it in your mouth, what happens? Or does he have a mouth, or is it just a grill? That is a personal choice. Yeah. Want to keep this PG? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Said no one in Shadow of the Demon Lord 
ever. No, 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 not I, I, I told you we're supposed to keep this PG, so yes, you can't set me up like that. But uh, <laughs> so, well, we can, yeah, no. and we will. Yes. Um. Hmm. I do not know. You are the first time I've been people I've been with who want to have fun with me, so I can try. Mm. All right. Well, wires. Oh, my she gets like a little. So, uh, so you get me whatever you're gonna give me, I guess, and I will try to drink it. And I sit there for a second, then a little <laughs> kicks in, and then you just see it just kind of literally come out, his bottom just pour out. So it literally runs right through him. Uh, can we get a mop, please? Well, no, no, don't worry, don't worry about that. I, we, <clears throat> we can take care of that and he, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. And you see this young guy come running out and he gets on the hands and knees and wipes it all up. He said, thank you. These guests are going to help us find our missing people and get our grain back. So please take care of them tonight. And I look at the rest of my friends and simply say, are we having fun yet? Uh, we're starting to have fun. We're not quite all the way there. Um, hey, hey Zia, did you, did you hear we got voluntold to go find those people? I, I, I did, you know, and I just had a real quick question. Um, oh, yes, yes, how far course. away did they travel? Well, they traveled about about 10 miles. Um, okay. so it's not 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 that far, but you kind of have to go down the the uh, the east road a little ways just on the outskirts of the woods. And, and you know, there's some weird things in the woods. And so it's just oh, yeah. it, it, it's, people. Mm. What? I'm from the woods. It's weird there. What kind of particularly <laughs> weird things do you have in the woods here, friend? Well, lately, and it's just recently, there has been tale, just rumors. I haven't seen any myself, but people have been talking about this pointy-nosed thing of hair, kind of tall goblin thing. And some of his henchmen that have been trying to steal chickens and put graffiti out and, you know, cause cause chaos, more or less. Um, but beyond them, it's just lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. So a goblin, a big goblin. Hmm. That could be a troll. Could but be a bugbear. Only- our people were only supposed to travel during the day, and we know goblins like don't they turn to stone during the day or something? They don't. They don't like light. I think I don't know what it is, but I, they would never come out at night and do that during the day, right? I, you uh, know, I've never met a goblin. The whole fairy goblin thing just doesn't. Family always hates each other the most, right? That wasn't offensive, was it? What? I don't know. Whatever just happened here with the thing and the thing. No, I'm just saying. I I've never met a goblin. I don't. I don't oh, know okay. any. I need to know these things, you know. Okay, I'll tell you anything you need to know there, friend. Important question there, Harold. It is Harold, right? Harold Brewer? It is, it is. Excellent. Thank you, uh, sir. Any good fishing spots out to the east? Mm. You know, just in case they, they got caught up. Yes, yes. I, I, will, I, I tell you what. I will take you to my personal favorite fishing spot if mm. we can get this resolved quickly it, this is where i caught the, the last year's championship weighted fish this thing was big i mean it was big and mm. nobody else caught anything like it when we went out last year that would definitely be a fish for the ages it would really be efficient if we caught a big big one <laughs> i'd be close to harold I think the weirdest part is that he doesn't know that he's doing it. <laughs> I got that feeling. No clue. Well, I think it's probably time we deal with this then, because I'm interested in this fishing hole. Yeah. And these libations have been top notch. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did you try the dark? It is, um, well, it's a secret recipe, but let's just say it's not the flavor you would think. Oh, no, I, I don't care for dark. I, I need to be able to see through my beer mm. to drink it. Well, this one almost pours like like loose tar. Ooh, loose tar. 
Ah, Kunk's <laughs> gonna love that. Hmm. Well, if you love mushrooms and asparagus, you have just had your favorite beverage. I mean, Ooh, sign to, me up. To be fair. Words. If beer tasted like mushrooms and asparagus, I might drink some. <laughs> Point. All right. I just lose. To- like it takes fifteen minutes to pour a pint. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how I have to chew it. It's a very slow pour. Yes. Takes a long time to get it that thick. Trust. Yeah, it's, it's fighting me, but uh, I like a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, I tell you what. If I have a uh, a room out back that is, you're welcome to put any of your belongings, lock anything in. Um, he sets a key on the table. This is the only key to it. Your you will be your property will be safe. I'll keep an eye on it, um, and just if you can do anything, just to kind of check and see if uh, you know where these people might be. They might just be a, a broken wheel on the wagon and stuck trying to fix it. It's probably I mean, that. It's usually the most simple things. Yeah, I mean these things never get out of hand, so it should be pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Yep. If we if we had a few more responsible people in town, we would take care of it ourselves. But it's it's just down to me. So. Ah. Well, you know, see, it it might be interesting to head out now. I do believe that means that we'll be taking part of our trip at night. Yeah. But uh... if there's dangerous things around, then it's perhaps best that we encounter them, and we're more likely to do so at night. You know, I reckon if these guys have been uh, missing for three days, we should mm-hmm. we should make as much uh, headway as we can. Yeah. So, uh, Zia will slap their knee for the probably third time at this point. Well, <laughs> we should probably get going. Unless and there's anything else we need to know about the road between here and the woods. No, no the road should be, um, it's two ruts, and it looks like wagons just go up and down it, and that's um, that's the road. Mm, sounds like a good. My road's having a good night. Wait, yeah. we're we're, we're leaving. Did, did we have the fun? Did I miss it? No, no. The fun sometimes moves along. Yes, the oh. party. The party is moving. Oh, oh. The, party the party is moving on the east road, to be exact. So we must go catch to the party on the east road. Understood. Yes. Yes. I thought we were the party on the east road. Well, that's that's what I mean. <laughs> that we are the party, and we're going on the east road. Also, oh. also known as the Noir Parkway. We should travel <laughs> along it. There might be goblins. We have to get supplies. <laughs> the Obsidian Path, even? The Obsidian Path, yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, something Bethesda, but yeah. Something there. All right. Um, make your finished beverages. Anything else you would like to do in town? Anything else you'd like to poke around at? It's probably couple of hours until dark. Um, eh, if there are Finnish beverages, are there Swedish beer? I'm sorry? If there's Finnish beer, is there Swedish beer? Um, I don't mean, it's too much to ask. Ain't dang to ask, rather. Hmm. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. No, no, this is all we've got for you. Hungry yeah. though, I do have some of that fish from last year left over, still wrapped and salted. I could bring out a little slice for you. Oh yeah, I love a good salted fish. All right, he wanders into the back, and you hear we leave. Okay, there's pots <laughs> banging, and you don't know why. As soon as he's gone, as soon as his back is turned, <laughs> what? Right. Pull a Batman. Again, no one's going to eat this effing fish ever again. All right. Make your way out. And at this Apparently point, my character has a mustache. Most, <laughs> like most of the villagers are uh, in buildings, but peeking out windows, um, hiding behind a rain barrel, tall grass over by the lakeside, watching over. Um, Whisper waves at each and every one. And uh, you get a couple of waves back. They, they kind of um, see what you're doing. They know you were just in there talking with kind of their town spokesperson he, you know they don't really have a mayor or anything like that he's just kind of their voice um, and so they, they assume you must be somewhat 
decent folk. Um, you're all traveling with a, the, the priest of the same religion that they all um, bow down to in this town. So Yes, we um, have our safety human with us. Yeah, you have your safety human. I prefer uh, the term token. As you have a little vest that says token on the back. Big cape with a T on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and you make your way through town and pop over onto the East Road, which looks slightly worse than the road you came up on. And it is two wagon trips. Track two wagon wheel tracks heading down over through over roots and uh, beat down tall grass, um, probably about six feet wide, maybe eight feet wide um, of beaten down grass, and then the grass jumps up to two or three feet tall. Um, going from there, you may travel until it start sun just starts to set. Beautiful sunset off. Uh, for you to watch as it, um, as day disappears and night comes into play. Uh, and you start to see um, a just off in the distance what looks like a just smattering of broken pieces of timber lying across the road. Hmm. Perhaps we should go check that out. Uh, is this a time to investigate? It is a time to investigate, Tom. Huh? Why don't you go investigate? I'm going to go investigate. All right, I like it. Uh, while Crunk is investigating, Whisper is starting to look around to see if the source of the broken material uh, might be lurking in the forest. All right. Um, looking around, you see the, f the forest is probably 100 yards south of where you are. So there's a good long chunk of field. Um, I'll tell you what, I was trying to find an attribute to see oh. what you had. Oh, hey, I'm outstanding in my fields. <laughs> Is it your field? I mean, I'm outstanding in the fields. <laughs> That's even better. Um, why don't you, you throw are, me a, 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 luck, a luck roll, if you would. Uh -huh. you haven't played before. Uh, a luck roll is just a d20. You're trying to get 10 or higher to see if something good happens to you. Something good, something good. I, like, I get to roll the first die and set the tempo for this game. Here comes my nat one. Nope, 19. Ooh, all right. Um, well, as you're looking, getting closer and investigating the uh, the area, you see that just off to the north side of the road, there appears to be some freshly dug dirt about six feet long, about three and a half, four feet wide. I point this out to my companions because I don't know what that means. Huh. Well, hmm. as people slowly turn to see what you're pointing at and there's a pile of dirt on the ground, just off to the side of that should have been obvious to anybody looking that direction, but it, um, there are also two bodies that have been hung from the tree by the neck. Mm. I turn to the left and go, ah, and jump back. Very unfortunate. I instantly pull out my saber and then shoot my shield and look around, expecting trouble, because he's from when he's crunk screamed. All right. Well, there still doesn't appear to be anything um, living other than you around the area. Um, a broken down wagon is definitely there. It's two of its wheels broken off um, at at either on either side. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got two uh, bodies hanging from a tree, and what are some overturned or, or piled up dirt off to the side there? Oh. So. Ow. Go ahead. I was going to say. I was going to ask a question that I realized Crunk wouldn't wouldn't uh, have any way to know that thing. So I'm just going to... Crunk is going to poke at the bodies and see, like, make sure they're really dead. All right, you poke and, at the bodies. And, I, and Adrian, wasn't Soldier D looking at them too? Yes, well, I was going to say I'm just on guard. I was going to go just cut um, while he was poking them. I walk over to the side to see the rope hanging and just cut it down all right they flop down to the ground they um don't start ah! talking they're definitely uh deceased they're wearing very similar clothes to those that the town folks were wearing um they might have the same tags or the same little name plate on them something telling you that they're probably uh stitched by the same person there in town i love the fact that this whole town 
has their names stitched right on their right on their tunics. That's great. Um, we found two bodies, right? And we yes. were told two bodies and a pile of dirt six feet long yeah. and three feet wide. Can't imagine what that is. Hey, Whisper, why don't you throw me a luck roll? Okay. Oh boy, D20. Ooh. That's our right. page. Symmetry. Yeah. He rolls a 19, I roll a 2. <laughs> well, it averaged one success. You did perfect. Yes. All right. You don't feel too lucky. Yeah. All right. Anybody else poking around, digging in, checking what else are we doing around? There's really not. One thing that you do notice is there's no grain on this broken down wagon. Hmm. Do we see any other tracks leading anywhere else? Um, where you're standing at, you actually see a bunch of heavy boot prints in the ground, um, maybe from uh, directly underneath where the people were hung. Um, and there is uh, some beat down grass heading to the north. Um, possibly a, it could be a game trail, possibly a people trail, hard to say, from where, you know, without doing some deeper investigating. So is there anything else on the wagon? You said there was no grain, but is there anything there rather than the absence of things? Or is this like, what is the sound of one hand clapping? It's an empty wagon. <laughs> and you must um, fill it with meaning. <laughs> as you're looking, look a little closer at the broken down wagon, you do see that there is an arrow shaft jam stuck into one side of it. Um, and the two wheels that are broken appear to be smashed with something not like they were broken by use. Mm. Um, they are splintered, but they are cut sharply, possibly by an axe or a heavy blade of some kind. Mm. Oh, so this was not an accident. <laughs> As they're doing this, um, after V has cut down the bodies, I'll start um, giving them some final rites. All right, well, you kneel down and start to do that. And as you do, you actually noticed small little footprints kind of dancing in that were kind of looked like they were dancing in and around the bigger prints, almost like they were trying to mirror the bigger footprints to maybe hide themselves. Um, but they look, um, they don't have shoes. They're just little small prints. Um, and they tend, they actually look like they lead off to the south towards and the these woods. Are human feet? Uh, the booted ones were humans. These are smaller little um, little four-toed feet. Hmm. Mm. Do I know perhaps if goblins? Yeah. Have when, four when, if they if those, if that's pointed out to you, then you definitely know that those are look like goblin footprints. Yes. Well, like you know, I speak goblin. We're required to take electives to understand mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. some of our estranged brethren. Uh, oh, so it is as foretold. Yes. A F. <laughs> As for Toad. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't even in character. That was just Ben. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to make sure that the pot, like, there, there was a, there was a, as, there's an AF joke, but then there was also, I want to make sure the pun was caught as, as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. do not miss that. That, yeah. that was the main, that was the point. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And now that I've explained the joke, I've only made it worse. Much like the second. But did you make it better? <laughs> Explaining jokes makes them all better. Or was that just a thing for me after 50? So. <laughs> hey, I mean, watch no, on the old let's go. Beyond 50 <laughs> stuff. <laughs> all right, so you look like you have Adrian some and I too. look like spring chickens. <laughs> right. <I'll be> <laughs> uh, you've got some goblin feet to the south. You've got some a couple of dead people. Yeah, a pile of dirt, and you've got a possible trail of boot prints to the north. Well, mm. I kind of hate to do this, but Kronk, uh -huh. would you be so kind as to dig out that pile of dirt, please? Okay. Since this is shovel? Baldur's Gate 3, I hand you a shovel, because I know you can't do it without it. <laughs> I take no actions as I shovel. All right. You, or I'm you, uh, the shovel animation. don't have to go very deep and uh, you get down a couple of feet of all loose dirt and you come across an, another human male that's deceased this one however is uh, dressed obviously different he's wearing dark clothing 
and has a red sash around both, just above both elbows. Huh. And this has, is not looks a like his, missing human. It looks like his head was smashed with something heavy. And of course the bandits would only bury one of their own. Do we know so, what the red sash? You don't. You have not come across that in your prior travels. How do we think he got here? Did he just sashay into this hole? <laughs> I can mute you. <laughs> no one can hear you. <laughs> I didn't what if I rephrase it? They have, a, just, they have a red happened. bandana around each elbow. What can you give me then? Ah. Uh, well, clearly he's a bandit then, right? Mm -hmm. He's got the bands. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All you right. have a superpower, and you love to flex it. I mean, you know, if you God got a superpower, God right? damn it. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, holy. I high one. What am I doing? Yes, yes. High one. Uh, how far from town are you? I hand you a gone? gummy, oh, high one. <laughs> how far from town? You're about uh, probably just three or four miles from town. Oh, okay. okay. I meant, like, in time. Sorry. Oh, um that much time okay i mean it, it's probably not sunset because it's hour? a couple hours before dark and we can walk five miles in an hour very easily does the cart look at all repairable like even if it's just a lit back um you would almost have to it has the left side has working wheels the right side does not so if somebody had skills in that type in repairing those things, you might be able to take one wheel off, put it on the other side. You'd have two wheels, somebody could hold up the back and you could walk it forward. Um, but it would be an unpleasant trip and it would be a lot of effort for a wagon that is empty and not yours. Yes, we should tell the townsfolk of Stillwater about this. No doubt they want to recover it. But I suspect our bandits are elsewhere. Unfortunately, we have bandit tracks, perhaps heading north, and then Gerblin tracks, perhaps, heading south. Wait, so we have Gerblins and Goblins? Gerblin, Gerblin is a familiar term for Goblin. Oh, I'm unfamiliar with that term. Mm -hmm. It's a term I know because I have black cats that are little Gerblins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, north? with the booted footprints, or south with the goblin footprints? Well, the you goblins... know, we could take the bodies back to the town and then start out in the morning to one of those two directions. So here's my thought on that. <coughs> we have two of the townsfolk accounted for, which means the bandits have probably absconded with the third one. And I have concerns for this person's health and safety. Why wouldn't the goblins abscond with the person? <clears throat> Maybe the goblins absconded with them. But we, we know the bandits are the ones that probably killed these people. So they might be the ones that took the prisoner. The grain is also gone, and perhaps that's what the goblins boosted. But the goblins like chicken, not grain. I don't think there's very many goblin... Are there goblin bakeries? Have they been hiding goblin bakeries from me this whole time? Mm. Oh, but have you never had uh, goblin donuts? Well, oh, they're mm. quite good. Goblin oh. muffin top? Mm. I think uh, myself and Soldier V should uh, head up north. And you two go south. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> Which group do I kill off so that party. I can focus on the other group? <laughs> Right. Uh, you know, I don't we'll think that would week. be a good idea <laughs> because there are goblins around and if we are going to face this tall big goblin creature, I would hate to do so uh, without the full might of our entire group. So that perhaps best we stick together. You know, I've always respected your wisdom. Thank you. As I'm a rogue, it's not exactly my best staff, but I got common sense. 
Can I inspect the bodies and see if I can tell like what type of weapons may have made those wounds? So that would that might help us decide like a goblin sword is going to be different than a bandit sword. Right. Yeah. Um, It'd be different actually, size for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say go ahead and give me a, an intellect roll, please. Intellect roll. Okay. Yeah. So just d twenty plus size your size modifiers. Size. Yeah, I don't have a modifier, so. That's all right. What's the modifier? All right. Okay, let's see what we got. And that's going to be an 11. All right, 11 is enough to notice that um, they're made with definitely larger blades, uh, probably long swords, uh, possibly a, a two-handed axe, but they were they they were beat uh, bloody with uh, big, large, sharp weapons. Um, probably too big a, for a goblin, so I will relay that information. All right. Mm. I think we should go after the bandits first, but I do want to call on those goblins. It could be very interesting. I've never met a goblin. That would be interesting. Do the goblins have goblin donuts? There's only one way to find out, but we must look for the missing human first. Apparently they do. My uh, sentiments exactly was great. What? My sentiments exactly, Whisper. Ah. Well, in that case, north we go. Well, all right. Well, as you start working your way north, make sure you don't, there's nothing else that you need to see. Sorry. Uh, bad GMing. Um, no, make your way no, north. Just on realistic GM. <laughs> You are uh, following what looks like a game trail, um, but it, it's uh, you do pick up a boot print here and there, flattened tall grass, just a couple of feet wide. Um, but almost you probably get 20 yards in, and then the path widens out a little bit. Um, and it looks like maybe people who were single file spread out so they could walk a little bit easier maybe, and they beat down yeah. quite a large path. Um, and you guys can easily pick up a dozen or more... Um, distinct tracks walking all walking north um many mm. of them pretty heavily beaten down um, either by their very large or carrying a lot of weight hmm i'm concerned about the four of us rolling up on a dozen bandits perhaps we should um watch them for a while just to make sure we aren't biting off a larger mouthful than we can chew. Well, and also, uh, we don't want to make assumptions about who they are or what their motivations are. You know, sure. so like observing them from a distance is a very respectful way to find out if there's somebody we need to kill. Yes. That sounds. That's a sound strategy. But what if we just want to kill them? What if we don't need to kill them? Calm. We've, We've talked, talked about, about this. The difference between murder and killing before. <laughs> I think I remember that. Yeah. I think. We, 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 we did. Yes, we and did. We said we only kill the people that Whisper say is okay. Oh. Yes, the rogue is the moral center of the party. As it should be. As it generally is. <laughs> All right. Um, well, continuing northward, um, making way through <clears throat> grass stays beat down and you get a little bit further and it starts to dissipate and you start to kind of get just kind of dried dirt um, little kind of stubby grass a little tree with you know barely any bark just kind of dead limbs hanging off as you continue and off in the distance you see a, uh, a stone tower um, kind of broken bits of rock around its base possibly the remnants of a couple of walls jutting off of two corners hard to tell quite from where you're at and there is a tendril of smoke coming up from either the tower or somewhere nearby hmm the bandits might be using that ruined tower as a place where they can find a refuge from the wild hmm. is there any approach we could make where like we wouldn't be seen like i guess from there, is it pretty much? It seems to you're, a, you're in a pretty flat land. It looks like whatever this was was built there whenever it was built long ago for that reason to see what's coming its way. Um, it obviously didn't work because it is left in ruins currently, but um, you don't see a clear path uh, to hide unless you've got something very sneaky um, to do. 
Okay. And this is I nighttime. think uh, you're not. It, it, the sun has just set. It's you know, it oh. is just getting to be dark. Um. So I think I'm sneaky. Like if I have to make an agility roll, I'm in good shape. Yeah. When you make it, yeah, you get something that adds ten to the results. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Once per long rest. Yeah, that's that's fine. I yeah, mean, yeah, like, yeah. We can just long rest whenever we want, right? Yeah, won't have any consequences. <laughs> so you uh, can sleep overnight, any as many times during the day as you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. I'm going to stealthily creep forward. Okay. As an elf, I have both keen hearing and keen scent. All right. No, well, both keen, keen vision. Keen vision. Both of those let you do those things twice as good as somebody else. Yes. So I don't have to get that close. All right. Um, let's say you get a little bit closer. You don't, uh, and um, you can um, either roll your agility or if you want to use your little plus 10 ability, then it automatically can happen, whatever you want to do, uh, to try and stay as hidden as you can, low to the ground, that kind of thing. Uh, when you make an agility or intellect roll, use this trait to add 10 to the result. Yeah, so okay. that means you can see what the result is first, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is an 18 on the die. My agility is plus three. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're as happy as you can be. Yeah. Um, well, getting a little closer, you see that there are two crumbling walls reaching out from the tower, um, collapsed into rubble piles, maybe 15 feet apart. Um, some kind of ivy grows along the sides of it, and it has been for a long time. You see what looks like possibly a wood, the top of a wooden cage, maybe, behind one of the walls. Um, and you catch probably half a dozen different heads bobbing up and down as they kind of walk around the area. Um, and, and at the last second, out of the corner of your eye, you actually see two men with a torch kind of walking a patrol around the outside, maybe 50 yards, not quite that far, probably 20 yards from the walls themselves. They're kind of making a circle around the, the ruins. And it, so it's a half dozen in camp plus two patrollers? It's what you see now. Though. There is a tower and the tower looks to be maybe four store, three to four stories still intact. Mm -hmm. um, and, there, and the smoke is definitely coming out um, the center of it. Okay. So I will um, creep probably a quarter of the way around the circle of the base just mm -hmm. to see if I can see into the tower or see people coming into and out of the tower. Okay. Um, there's, you, you get around far enough to kind of see past one of the crumbled walls and you are able to see that there is a wooden cage there. You do not see anything in the cage. It appears empty, but there's also another fire or fire pit um, not going at the moment with a large cook pot kind of hanging from something over the top. Um, there are actually maybe a dozen people sitting out kind of in and around Camp Most are sitting down. Some are laying down, taking a break. Um, and there is a closed door to the tower. Mm. Um, and it does not appear to have windows. But at this place, you can see that there are arrow slits at all um, at north, south, east, and west on each of the three floors. And the, and the top of it is crenulated. So they're um, yeah. cover there. Yeah. So that is a tower we do not want to assault. Um, that would be quite painful. It might be best to see if we can grab the patrol and get them to tell us what happened. I mean, also, I don't have a good idea of how strong these characters are compared to <laughs> Joe Commoner. Like, the four yeah. of us versus a dozen bandits seems like an iffy fight, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it seems like it should be. Um, <laughs> generally speaking, heroes in the game, characters in the game are heroic at the beginning. You are better than the average person. Mm -hmm. You should be able to take on two to four average people. Um, that's assuming a bandit counts as an average person. I mean, so right. take, take it here or there. They could be, you know, it might be two bandits to one. It might be, yeah. they might be uber bandits and it might be four of you against one of them. Seems like yeah. a bad adventure, but it's possible, right? Right. Like the the fifth edition uh, bandit captain is just about the baddest <laughs> dude on the block. I've I've fought that guy. I understand. Yeah, those and um, red caps. Uh, <laughs> that's why they're in every adventure, right? One of the two. <laughs> uh, so, what do we think about maybe jumping the patrol first? 
And I say this knowing that I am usually not the jumper. Wait. And uh, Whisper, they look at Soldier V, and then they look at Crunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yes, if we go now, and I start walking towards the where I think they can. Uh, let me let me guide us to where I think the patrol might be. Oh, and so the okay. patrol's about 20 yards from, you know, that, that patrol is about 20 yards away, mm -hmm. and it just kind of made its way, and they've just moved outside of the vision after you've pulled back to the group. Yeah, so I kind of want to put the, the tower between the camp full of bandits and us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we set up an ambush. All right. I well, have a quick question. You take a long question if you like. Ooh. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in this question, I would know. Um, all right, so I know that I'm uh, my great hammer does 3d6 damage to people, but does 4d6 to buildings, yes, uh, or objects, yes. It, three, okay, yeah, that's why you were like, I don't know that we can take that many bands. I'm like, I'm pretty sure a decent roll, I can kill a motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> true, what <laughs> hit, yes, yeah, sorry. I, we're supposed to be PG. That was my one. I don't know what's on, I guess. Enjoy it. Yeah, no, I'm going to savor that for a moment because. Uh... Well, yeah. All right, Deadpool. I mean, you took it, so. Yeah, well, I didn't expect to, but here we are. Uh, so, how how much health? So, if I wanted to Kool Aid Man my way into this tower, mm -hmm. uh, how many strikes, like at average, would it take me to make a hole? See, 4d6 is what 14 on average. You're gonna need to knock a space big enough for one of you to get through, uh -huh. is gonna be probably three good solid wax. Okay, um, but it's you gotta also factor in whether that's gonna be enough to bring an old rickety ruined tower to the ground or not. <laughs> that would be the I was just trying to open a door. This crunk sitting in the remains of the entire crumbled tower. Hey, um. Yeah. And then, uh, Whisper, you saw a cage, right? I did, but there was nobody in it. Oh. Yet? Hmm. Yet. Ooh. Maybe they were out on a restroom break. I'll be right back. So I go over and look. Is there still nobody in the cage? There's uh, still nobody in the cage, um, but throw me another luck roll if you would. I did much better. Good. I got a three. All right. Well, that is um, thirty three percent better. This is three to see century, two centuries, kind of making their way around again, um, and they kind of continue on their path. Um, and you've kind of got the timing down between the first group and this group that you saw. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, get back. All right. There's actually two sets of patrollers. Uh, the second set will be coming around the corner of the castle in uh okay oh, so we should go get them now then yes matter of fact you battle blessing yes all right thank you uh, all right. We, as yes, they come around you guys stand go out ahead here and, off the trail yeah. that you they'll never see yeah go ahead and um and uh let's take an with the two guys kind of come around the corner they're chatting with each other not looking your direction you've been as stealthy as an eight foot tall bear man and robot can be and <laughs> uh, and they somehow did not notice you with through their torchlight and so go ahead and make your ambush uh, what would you like to do um let's see am i able to have done battle blessing before we yeah, you go ahead and drop it, and then they'll start going. Yeah, you threw it out. You, you yell battle blessing, and we start doing things. Uh, do you remember to leave one of them alive and capable of talking? I want to go, I guess, bash one. Oh, well, let me see. Um, You're immune to frightened. All of us are immune to frightened. And get mm -hmm. a one boon on attack rolls. Nice. For the next minute. Mm-hmm. Which, generally speaking, a minute really equals a combat in yeah. loose enough terms. Have, have, has Crunk been told not to, you know, make his presence known in the traditional fashion, which is incredibly loudly? Yes. All right, cool. Yes. I figured I should okay. ask that question before I make There will be a time awkward. tonight for that yell, but this is not it. 
Right. So I'm gonna go behind one of them, I guess, and grapple them around the neck so they can't call out and see if I can, you know, put them out. All right, there is unarmed combat in here on this page right over here. That's my favorite page. Yeah. I thought page. I was your favorite page. What about you? Uh, it is page 18, right column. It is. I was on 17, working my way there. So you want to grab. So you try to grab a creature, choose one creature in your reach. So you run, you get yourself up to him and make a strength or agility roll against the target's agility. And you can, um, you get to choose which one you'd like to roll. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with strength, looking at what I have available for my character. Um, and what's my bonus? Yeah, let's go for that. Okay. Big and numbers, have, no whammies. And I have a boon, right? Correct? You do. Yeah, for a battle I don't use it, But I don't have to use it, though, if I don't want to. Well, you, you, you get, get it on it all your attack rolls. Yeah, you have it all the time. Oh, okay. So I have to roll that plus my three plus three d six and pick the highest one. You no, are it's, hashtag it, battle blessed. Yeah, the battle blessing is only one boon. Oh, okay. D twenty and one d six, and then add those together and add your modifier for strength to it. Yes. All right, five. I got an eight. All right, you reach to go and grab him, and the agile bandit ducks out of your way, um, and it's screams cute. bloody murder. Um, well, it doesn't scream bloody murder, but he yells, um, intruders, intruders, and, um, Crunk, um, go ahead. Now, now, Crunk. I'm letting you know that the, the time for the noise is now. I didn't think I was going to have to figure it out for this combat, so I hadn't actually come up with it yet. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm just gonna, uh... Now he's your own time. spot. Oh, it's fine. Uh, oh, kill up. It's pancake time! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to. This guy has gotten close up to me. I'm going to engage the enemy so that it, uh, if he takes damage from this and lives through it, his speed's going to be zero. All right. Murder. All right. So I have a 16. That will hit him. Sweet. I'm going to roll the damage. Congratulations, you're not an object. I don't roll all the dice. It's not an object. Oh, unfortunately, I did not roll super great. I did seven points of damage. All right. And seven I'm points of damage him. is a good day in my world. Do I? So do I add my strength to that, or is it just the die roll? Just the die roll. Okay. And you hit, you hit that bandit, and that bandit explodes under your damage. And uh, you now have paste of bandit stuck all over your your weapon. Jeez. And for add that to your character sheet. Mm. So I'm a, yeah, I'm a dragon a hero now. Yeah. The other bandit um, sees this and continues screaming intruders and takes his action to run as fast as he can. I um, would you like two to... technically you still have a you fade, you still can ambush if you would like. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of come up under Crunk's elbow and uh, do a two weapon attack with my small sword and my dagger. Uh -huh. Woo, woo. So that's 11 plus agility 3 plus battle boon of another 3. 17. That sir. hits him all day long. Almost right. twice. His uh, padded armor does not provide much protection. For 10 points. Well, your, pri your prisoner guard is now also deceased. And he, is, well, he has been sliced. Be and so both of these um, sentries are dead at your feet and you see um, light sparking up in from the others from the far side of the arrow slits uh, in the tower and can hear mustering of uh, people and weapons on the other side of the wall perhaps we should move since there was just a lot of noise here let me go that way move towards the around around we're gonna oh, okay. get there very disappointed. Which side are you going? going um, left side, right side of keep or of tower? There's. I don't know, Soldier V. Which way are we going? Left or right? Um. Well, the left would take us probably to the right, actually. Because which way? Right. 
Yes, we're going to go to the right. Is this an odd numbered edition or an even numbered edition? That was the question I was going to ask, but it's a new game, so this is the first edition. So right? is this so odd? Yeah. So yes, we're going to go to the we're going to go to the right. It's all odd, right. just like all of us. I'll, I'll take a moment right. to to close the 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 eyes and to quickly rifle their pockets. Like a priest should. Yep. <laughs> you, you do such a thing. And you guys start to make your way to the right. Um, as you do, a barrage of arrows comes your way. Uh-oh. And we are going to throw uh, two arrows at each of you coming out of these arrow slits and off of the roof. Okay. And so we will go at Whisper first. My defense is 15. All right. Well, we rolled a 12 and a 15. So we do have one hit. Mm-hmm. Let me slide back over here to Bandit. Bow. All right. And that is an entire three points of damage. Noted, sir. All right. We will slide over to Krunk. Ooh, with a ooh, nine, nice. a nine right. and a 16. Both of those hit, baby. All right. You take a 12 points of damage maximum roll. Well, I can do this all day, or at least for two more of those attacks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, Zia. You said that was six points of damage? Uh, no, three. Uh, three, three on yours, yes. yeah. So yeah, I have a 13 and a very low number. Uh, neither of those will hit me. All right. And Soldier V, we, we have an 18 and a 12. One hits. All right. You get an arrow to the shoulder for five damage. Okay. And you And as you kind of peel off to the right, you guys are still roughly 20 yards from the kind of the walls. Um, you can see that there are probably four people up top. There is somebody on each of the arrow slits all the way down, and you are seeing multiple guards pour around both sides of the uh, of the left and the right side of the walls. Um, a lot you of them appear to be not tower. wearing their armor. They're not all fully dressed, but they all have weapons and or bows drawn, or swords or bows drawn. Uh, the archers in the tower... Yes. Is it just one bane to hit one behind the crenellations and like two banes? No, they are, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they are all in, in heavy. And so you've got, I believe that it is three. Okay. Going to check it. It's in here also. I'm going to point to the tower and say, we need to run toward the tower to avoid the archers. Hmm. But then we run into the arms of all those fighters. But you're the tactician, so <laughs> we'll do whatever you say. Yeah, but I can pancake all the little guys. The guys that are shooting arrows, not so much. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, you, wherever you guys could, I mean, all kind of things you can do. So. Um, we're going to head towards the ta- run towards the tower. Obscurement. That's not obscurement. Uh, it's exact too. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, I got it. Uh, serpentine. Serpentine. <laughs> Either way, we're going to go with three banes until further notice because I'm not going to get stuck on it and somehow that page evaporated from me. That's just fine. All right. So well, you guys... Page doesn't evaporate. No. <laughs> so where, what do we want to do? We've got people coming from the left, people coming from the right, and people um, shooting arrows from above, for lack of a better term. We're going to run towards the tower. All right. Um, target cover behind an obstacle of its size or larger. It's behind that one bane. Total cover. All right. So it is going to be one bane because there is only cover and total cover in this particular situation. So it would be one bane to try and pick those guys off. Um, unless, of course, they move, you know, unless, of course, they yeah. go and move. Um, so well, you'd have to go before they go in order to uh, target them at this point. Yeah. Nope. I, uh, I'm. We'll concentrate on the ones on the ground, because that's what our our fighters are built for. All right, so um, you have a movement score. That's how many yards you can move in a round, or in addition to taking your action in a round. Um, Monsters get to um, go first. They all fired arrows, so we are back to y'all's turn. So this is your actual first round after the ambush round. So we have movement of five. I guess we'll run towards the tower, and I get the ones that are coming from the right are coming from around the tower, correct? That is correct, yep. Okay, so we can move towards that group first, and then we'll take us towards the closer to the tower. I have a movement of five. All right, Same. I'm looking for... Same. I have a movement of six because I'm an elf. Yep. <laughs> Unlike real life, where Ben walks a 
thousand miles an hour faster than so I do. fast. I know, right? All right, and so if you are just going to run, you can get you can double that to ten, and so you can mm -hmm. get halfway to the tower. Uh, I'm going to move a move of five so I keep up with the party and then um, use my longbow to try and get one of the ones on the ground. All right, go ahead and take a shot. That's an eight, 13, 16. That is a hit. Great, you may have six points of damage, oh, sir. My. A third nice. bandit falls to your your team's efforts takes a shot, drops down to a knee, gurgles something, and falls over dead. Oh, perhaps they're not as robust as I feared. They do seem squishy. Mmm, yes. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing most of one. Mm. All right. I, I reach over to Krunk and I close the eye that's on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that be a free action. Do you have anything else you'd like to do this round? Uh, can I get into melee? No, we are a little too far away still. You could, If you're going towards the tower, you can go about halfway there. If instead you want to go straight towards one of the two groups, uh, you could get about the same, about same thing, about halfway to them. Oh, no, I will 100% stay in um, the group. I will, however, use Mystic Ward on Crunk. Crunk's Ooh. defense kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't smart, but he can lift heavy things. <laughs> he moves a good defense as a strong offense. What, yeah. does, what does Mystic Ward do for Mr. Crunk? Of course. Um, Mystic Ward imposes one vein on any rolls to attack Crunk. Nice. And if Crunk takes damage, it is reduced by 1d6 to a minimum of zero. Nice. And effect ends. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, so it's just getting you out of one hit, basically. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, once he gets hit. Yeah. Seeing as how I would be in another You're game bloodied, game. Yeah. I'm okay with this. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Like, you have almost twice the health. All right. And so we had movement, movement, yeah, like move and spell, yes. move and fire. Everybody's done everything they can do, and we're about to start another round. And does anybody wish to take the initiative, giving up your reaction this round to go before the bad guys? Uh, so I give up my what, what? Reaction. You, everybody oh. get, you get one reaction per round to do different things based on your character, but you can give that up in order to go before the bad guys. It's called taking the initiative. I don't see anything that uses my reaction, so I'm gonna spend it while I got it. Are we? Are we? Are we in? Are we in melee range though? Not quite yet. No, you no, still I need another move some... to get to it. Or actually, because you guys are heading to the tower, and so you're, they'll come to you before you, that you'll get to them. Okay. And, so in that case, I'll, I guess I'll wait to take the initiative then when they get to me. I can use that then. Okay. Right. Can I? Take the initiative, move to the tower, since we were two moves away last time, and then yeah. break down the door so we can get inside to make them funnel to us rather than overwhelm us. You can you could run to the tower this turn, but that would be your action as opposed to moving and then whacking it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so you'd have to though. dash to get there. Double move to get there. All right, but I am going to take the initiative, and I'm going to shoot one of the bandits milling about right. on the ground. Okay. That's a 17. I'm just going to assume. All that right. Hit. That that one does hit. Um, it, this You actually hear it push through some metal on this one's armor. This one nice. appears to be armored uh, and makes it through some uh, the metal chest plate. Go ahead with some damage. We have five. All right. This one kind of shrugs that off, snaps the arrow, and drops it as he continues to charge towards I'm going to keep my eye on that one. <laughs> all right. what, what a bamf. Yeah. Uh, all right. So since I've been playing Baldur's Gate, what, uh, <laughs> what are the rules about throwing things that may or may not be a weapon? For instance, if I wanted to hit that guy with a torch with my obscene <laughs> amount of strength. You wanted to throw a torch at a person? Uh, I mean, this same guy is such a, such a bamf. He's like... I can take the zero all day. <laughs> you can use that as a um, an improvised weapon, which you would throw it. It has one bane on the attack roll, and it's going to do a torch is going to do odd damage. 
plus uh, yeah, it will do one damages. Mm. Okay, you do have but I'm not boon on attack rolls as well. Yeah, no, I, ha I have I have a, I have a few boons. Um, and sorry to be that person that's having trouble realizing the scene. If I move and throw, I will not be at the tower this turn. Correct. It'll be just short. Okay. Is because it's a double. It's two boons. Right, 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 right. But I, clearly, you're not going to get there. I I can shoot as well as I can poke somebody in the kidneys. Uh, poke somebody in the kidneys is definitely more damage. You know what? It's more fun to throw torches at people and kill them. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, so take a d20. I have... This is still a strength roll since I'm, I'm heaving something at someone, right? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. You're going after the same person that Whisper shot, correct? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to see if that my one point of damage puts us over the limit. Uh, so I have one Bane, uh, which means I'm rolling these dice. Oh, no! I miss. All right. He kind of just smiles a, a crooked tooth smile at you and changes pace and is coming your way. That sounds great. Yeah. Come, come and get me, friend. All right. Anybody else uh, wish to go before the bad guys? Uh, no. Oh. All right. All right. So we are going to have a, uh, a pile of arrows coming down at you guys again. We will go I in our behind crunk. <laughs> Whisper... That is a 14 and a 1. 15's your number, sir. All right. That is a miss then. Crunk. That is a 3. And Yay! A 14. Oop, and I have a Bane to roll with you now. So Aha! 14 minus 1 is a 13. Well, that still hits me. Takes but 5 I, damage. Let's reduce the damage by a d6. Yeah, but Sean should clearly roll that die since it's Sean's effect for running damage. Mm, yeah. All right. So go ahead and roll that and reduce the 5 by whatever you roll. 3. Three hey, damages I'll and spell pot off of you. All right, Zia, we got coming your way with 13 and 9. Those are both misses, I believe. And V, we have an 18 as the only relevant roll. That 18 will hit. All right, and that is for five damages towards you. Five again, okay. I just want to remind the group that when we long rest, you heal one point of damage. <laughs> no, you actually you heal all damage, but one point of health. Oh, your okay, health can go it. down also. Got so it. Your health is a static score. Damage builds up to that number. When it builds up, you fall over. Got it. Damage health can also dip down, making that number hard, easier to get to. Okay. Oh, so it's like so yeah, the damage and down. the drinking track on uh, Red Dragon Inn. You don't want them to meet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, they meet you fall over. Call back. We haven't played Red Dragon Inn in a while. So at Gen Con, they have now have instead of just the the adventures, and I'm sorry to lead us off on a tangent uh, that is not related to this game that we're playing. Uh, but now they have an actual role playing game where instead of just being the people drinking at the inn, you go on the adventures too. Like that, <laughs> I can go on adventures anywhere. Like yeah, they call it Pathfinder. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so that is those. And then, then we have one, two, we have uh, enough bandits to get up to you guys where the um, the infamous bandit is on Krunk and a regular bandit is, uh, is up next to each of the three of you. Sounds great. I will deal with this person and then head to support you. All right. And so we <laughs> have... He's still there. <laughs> All right. And so those of you who did not take the initiative to, at the beginning of the round can take your action now at the end of the round. Will do. So I will attack the bandit in front of next to me. Okay. Um, do I? Have, I don't have a boon on this one. I just have the straight roll, right? You have Say a boon to all your attack rolls. Yeah. Say it again. You have a boon to all your attack rolls. Oh, okay. So I have. Okay. So I do have a boon with it. All right. Cool. So let's see what we get with this. And your uh, base saber also has a boon, so you should be rolling with two boons. Oh yes. But. I don't think it matters on this one, but it's okay. So I have... 20, 20, I rolled a 25. That is enough to hit the bandit. <laughs> yes. uh, does it beat his defense by five? It does. You get your critical um, effect. Ooh, okay. So well, that means critical success. I rolled extra damage an additional time and used a higher amount. Mm -hmm. So that means... So I got six plus oh, 
12 points of damage. Oh, God. That seems like a lot, and it is enough to kill that poor bandit. That's like he said. Yeah, not be able to write home to his family once ever again. And then I rush towards the bandit um, oh, by um, Crunk. All right. And, hmm. I'm trying to. I'm going to go ahead and do my grind the gears. Ooh. All right, take another action. I'll turn your key, baby. I'm going to grind them gears, baby. All right, let's see. So grind them gears. Oops, that's a cock die. Let's try that. It's rolling. Okay. I will offer you a 18 to hit. An 18, I believe, is a hit. It is a hit. Okay. Not critical, though, right? It is not. No, sir. Okay. It's got to be above 20. And that one will be, let's see. That's going to be seven points of... Well, no, I don't get a, I don't get plus three to my damage, so that's only going to be four points of damage. All right, sounds good. He takes that shot and just kind of chuckles at you, and he says, uh, "Don't worry, Otto will be here soon." And then I have to roll a luck. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, with the grenade. Oh, become. Oh, yeah, I got I got At the end of the round, I make a luck roll. So I'll, at the end of the round, you got to remind me to make a luck roll. All right, all right. Who is else has a luck roll? An attribute roll. No, it's just luck. Luck is not an attribute. Yeah, luck Lucky. rolls don't generally have any modifiers, and an attribute roll uses your attribute. It's just yeah. a straight up, straight up roll. Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right, anybody left to go to the end of this round? I think we've all done things. All right, so it is the end of the round. Go ahead and make that luck roll for us. Let's see what we got. Big number. Woo! I got an 11. Nice. All right, you are still chucking. <laughs> all right. Um, at Anybody going to uh, take the initiative at the start of the round three? Yeah, I want to flatten this guy. All right. Do I Go have ahead. to take a reaction or some other kind of action to switch from longbow to, to weapon? Um, if you just drop your longbow and draw your sword, you're good to go. If you want to put it away, it takes two points of your movement to do so. Okay, fair. In that case, I will take the initiative. I will use two points of movement, leaving me four remaining to switch from longbow to dagger and sword. Wonderful. What do we do up there, Crunk? I have a 15 to hit. Oh, boy. All right. That bounces off of his, of his shield. What? Crank. All right. I would, like well. take the, I would like to take the initiative as well. All right. So I will give up my reaction. And That's what see. I get when my d20 rolls the lowest of my d20 and 36. <laughs> oh. I offer you a 23. That is a hit, and it is by five. Man. Nice. Man, he is Soldier V the Destroyer. What I do. <laughs> All right, that's going to be... Oops, let me go. Let's, let's go this one, man. Oh, that was really good. That will be four, um, four points of damage. Only four points All of right. damage. All right, he is Not still up and going, but he is looking sad about his life choices. I would like to take the initiative and yes. support. Wait, can I wait? Can I grind my gears again? You can. Yeah. Oh no, not no, in the no, same no. round. Same round. You can. No, this is a new no, round. No, this is a new round. round. Yeah, new you new round. You already new made round. the luck roll at the end of the last round. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Ooh, and I didn't get that one though. That's going to be a seven to hit. No, the seven. I mean, does not hit. nine, but it still misses. Okay. All right. All right. Um, what do you got rolling on with your initiative? I'm gonna support. Uh, Adrian, do you want me to support Soldier V? Or well, you got that? You do have a bandit that ran up to you also. Oh, yes, sure. sure. Yeah, but I thought you had one more on you. So yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, so I'm <laughs> going to try to get him with a two-weapon attack. That's a 21 on the dice plus another three. Call it 24. That is all the hit in the world and would be a crit if you, um, it is a crit, so you would get that extra D6 damage. Nice. Oh, my God, I've let... Go on to crunk levels of damage. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to offer Monsieur 15 points of damage. You kill him and both of his children. Oh, wait, wrong game. Yeah. You kill oh, him no. and two friends. <laughs> wow. The impact is, takes out the two other pieces. Yeah, I rolled a four, <laughs> nice five, six on the two fixes. Nice shot. Um, all right, that leaves us with the the high ones, uh, young and you know, wait your turn or are you going to jump ahead? I'm going to wait my turn. All right. Zia is very polite. All right, so that's it. 
That's standing, cool. coming up to the top of the tower. Oh, sure. Um, you go ahead. You see a gray-haired man bellowing, bellowing down to you. Um, looks like he's kind of hobbling up to the spot. He's in real heavy-looking armor, uh, has a heavy crossbow in one hand, and he says, I know you think you are doing right, but you are not. I will call my men off now, and this is your one chance to leave. And as he's saying that, you see all along the wall, there's probably ten more people with bows in addition mm. to the ones in the tower that have been firing. I cut my eyes at Zia, waiting for them to make that decision. This I, fight is not yours. I look right back at Whisper for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shawnee Sean Sean, this is mm. all you. I will... Like, I have my shield, my mace. I'm just kind of like, okay, well, we're listening. Turn back around, head back to the witch who came, and nothing she'll, nothing more shall come of this. I mean, that seems like a very generous offer, and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, one quick question, though. We were looking for some villagers from uh, that town, Still whose name I definitely know. Still, Still I definitely know. <laughs> and uh, we found two of them, but they were unfortunately no longer with us. You don't happen to have any here, do you? Um, there is nobody here that does not wish to be here on their own volition, of their own volition. That is not a no. It's not a yes. Okay, I hear you. Let me say let me say this. It looks like you might have some openings in your organization. And I'm not committed to anything, but you know, maybe we can sit down by the fire, have some of this asparagus beer, and you know, talk a little bit. Have you heard about the high one? He, he chuckles have. he chuckles loudly. We do not we do not um, follow those edicts around here. Quick question. Please yeah. be do gone before we open fire. Do any of the bandits have like those bandanas on them? Every one of them has got the double red bandanas. Okay, so these are the same ones that they, so, they buried their friend. So I think maybe okay, got you. So did you kill the two lads from Stillwater with the cart full of grain? And your buddy? We, yeah, we found a cart full. We found some grain on the side of the road. One of the bags fell onto one of our men as we were picking it up, and we buried him. Oh, yeah, killed by. Well, it does seem like you die pretty easily, so that I don't know, that part tracks. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> That's the reason. It, it was Skinny Pete. He didn't have many hit points to start with. <laughs> yeah, but... Okay, hmm. but you didn't see any villagers. Just the ones that the uh, goblins had hung in the tree. Well, oh, the right. goblins killed the villagers. How do you know that? Because we chased them off. Uh, oh, I believe that's how we, we obtained you... the free grain. Yeah. Um, yeah, the you know what needs that grain? You know what's better than grain? Beer. Beer. <gasps> I got one right. You did, Crunk. You did. I reach into my I reach into my robes and I take out a little gold star for Crunk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ben had to give me a gold star earlier today, so it's it's only appropriate that he's getting one. Uh, yeah. It seems like we owe you a tiny little apology. Well, as I said, you're welcome. Just we'll call it square from where we are here. Please send your way back, and uh, and hopefully we'll not cross paths again. Yeah, we're really sorry. That was a little bit of a. Uh, jump before you uh, yeah you know human lives are so short anyway it doesn't really matter let's move along so it's just kind of like <laughs> we, uh, don't don't the villagers need some of the grain back or they're gonna like starve through winter or something <sighs> don't you worry i will i'll take care of the villagers <clears throat> well, don't you ominous. worry nope that sounds really ominous yeah. did you know how ominous you sound with it sounded like you were threatening the villagers. Yeah, a little bit. That can't be a little Which, bit. Oh, well, I'll make clear. 
I don't care about after they show us to the fishing hole. I'd say you have a, probably a day or so before I make my way down to town to discuss grain with um, their leader, the brewmaster. What? Oh, yeah. Why do you need... Oh, so you're going to offer to sell the grain back to ransom it, more or less? Uh, something like that. Well, well, they're going to talk it out. That seems fair, right? Yeah, look, the they're humans. Blesses entrepreneurs. So, yeah, it makes sense. Well, best of luck to you. We'll be on our way. Have a good night. Aww. You see people kind of slowly backing up a little bit. Still still weapons drawn. Being over the dead. The, lamenting uh, that their the, children will have no mothers. The big bandit next to you that was right up in front of the two war, the, the two fighters is just kind of laughing and smiling. Um, I took both of you guys and didn't even break a sweat. Define took. What, what part of me did you take, friends? Don't you worry. You'll notice it when you when you miss it. Hmm. Well, party part is still there, right? Yeah, <laughs> probably <laughs> definitely. Probably reaches everything. down and it's just like... <laughs> Hopefully we'll have the, the crunk for days. Okay. I'm very confused about what he might have taken then because like, it might have been money, but who cares about that? <laughs> <laughs> and he, they make their way back behind their wall. Well, we, I think we're going to go a goblin. I mean, I think we're going to go. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we pull a quick five minute? People can grab a beverage or a restroom break and we will return shortly. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah, Yeah. sounds great. Sounds great. Having a great time.